What's up everybody, hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are continuing our exterior visualization workshop. In the previous videos, we have complete our modeling process. And now in this video, we are going to set up the lighting for our scene. And I'm going to show you different ways to do that. So if you missed the previous videos, make sure to watch them from the card above or from the link in the video description. Also make sure to watch this video to the end to understand the full lighting process. After that, download the project files and start practicing by yourself. You will find all the project files on my Patreon page, the link also in the video description. So now, without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, so this is what we have done in the previous videos. We complete our modeling and we have set up a camera, very physical camera, with setting of film speed 100, f number 8, and shutter speed 100. And that's it. Now, let's open our V-Ray setting. Let's go to V-Ray tab, global switches. Let's activate override material. And now we have to put a material to override all the other materials. So open the material editor and select a V-Ray material. Now just drag and drop the material to the override material and set it as an instance and hit OK. Now let's change some of the VLA setting. Let's go to the image sampler. Let's set it to the progressive and let's go to the progressive image sampler and change the render time to zero. And we will set the noise threshold to 1.01. 1. .01. And that's it. Now let's hit render and we will get a black render or an empty render. Why? Because we don't have any lighting yet. So the first thing to do is to put a lighting source and the easiest lighting source to set up is the V-Ray Sun. So let's go to create lighting and let's change it to V-Ray and we will select V-Ray Sun. Click on it, click on the viewport and drag it. Release the button and now V-Ray will ask you would you like to automatically add a V-Ray Sky environment? Let's choose from now, no, and see what's the difference between adding a V-Ray Sky or not. So now hit render, and let's see our rendering. We also got a black render because we didn't change the V-Ray direction, V-Ray Sun direction. So from the right view or the front view, just move it up, adjust the V-Ray Sun direction. And now let's see our test render. Okay, I'll hit cancel, cancel the render. Let's see our render. As you can see, now we have the V-Ray sun lighting, but we don't have an environment. And also the black areas is too dark. So what we are going to need, we are going to need an environment to generate a secondary light to fill up the black areas. So we have two options to do that. Either we choose the default V-Ray sky or to choose a custom HDRI. So let's see the first method. But before that, let's set up our sun direction. So the easiest way to do that is to activate IPR. You can activate it from the frame buffer by pressing the IPR button, start interactive rendering, and just minimize the frame buffer. Go from the top view and relocate the V-Ray sun. You can choose it up and down. Okay, now we have just set up our sun direction. Now let's set up the V-Ray sky, which will affect our lighting in the dark areas or in the shadows. So go to the rendering environment and from the environment map, select V-Ray and then V-Ray sky. Now we have immediately see the change in the IPR. Open the material editor and just drag it and drop it in any of the empty slots, material slots, as an instance. Now hit specify sun node and then click on sunlight and we are going to link our V-Ray sun with our V-Ray sky map. So just click on sunlight and click on the sun and that will link your sun with, with the V-Ray sky. So every time you, have, you will change the direction of the V-Ray sun, this will affect immediately on the V-Ray sky. So from the beginning, if you are planning to 
work with Vray Sun and Vray Sky, you can just go to create Vray Vray Sun. And while you are dragging, when this windows ask you, do you want to add the Vray Sky environment map? Click on yes. If you are planning to use Vray Sky map, if you are planning to use a custom HDRI, then in that case, please no. But for now, we are just to please yes, and that's it. It will link Vray Sun automatically with. Vray Sky map. Okay, so now a quick tip. If you are noticing a burning in your test render and you can see that easily by activating force color clamping, you will see now there's an area with a black color and also blue color. You will know immediately that you have a burn in your image. So to fix that, you have to go to a render setup, to the Vray tab and down to the color mapping, change the burn value from one to 0.5 or 0.6 let's see 0.6 now let's hit activate the IPR lander and you can see that we have get rid of all the burning in our image of course I'm going to make a full video about the color mapping and how to use it correctly so if you are interested to see that video make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming video okay now back to the Vray Sun let's stop the IPR and let's close the VLI setting. I will select the VLI Sun and go to modify and let's explain the VLI Sun parameters. Start the interactive rendering. Okay, so the first one is enable. Of course, you can enable or disable VLI Sun. The second one is invisible and to show you the effect of the invisible, I have to change the direction of the VLI Sun. Okay, so to show you the effect of the invisible option, I, I've set up a second camera, which is facing the VLI Sun. And now let's activate the IPR. And as you can see, there's this, the little white circle. This is the sun. If you uh, activate invisible, this dot will disappear, or this circle will disappear. Let's turn it on. And you can change the size of the sun or this circle from the size multiplier. So if you increase it, let's say for example 2, you will get double the size. Let's set it to 10 and you will get even a bigger sun or a bigger circle of light. Okay, so what's this going to affect the size of the sun? Let's back to our original shot. Just a quick tip about setting up the VLI Sun. Select the VLI Sun and you can go to any of the viewports and type right click and click set view to selected light. And that will give the view from the VLI Sun itself. And now you can rotate it and change it as you like. And we are going to see the feedback immediately on the VLI frame buffer. So position it as you want. Okay, perfect. Okay, now since we are using VLI Next, I'm going to maximize the viewport of the camera and activate the IPR directly from the camera viewport. So go to standard and change it to VLI IPR. So now it's rendering in real time. Let's select our VLI Sun from the selection filter. Activate lights and select VLI Sunlight. Okay, now let's see the VLI Sun setting. We have seen enable, invisible, effect diffuse, it will turn on or on or off the effect on the diffuse color and diffuse contribution will, will adjust the value of the light on the diffuse color let's set up to one which is the default value effect specular will affect on the reflection of the material and we are going to see it later when we are setting up our materials specular contribution also the same it will affect the amount of the lightings affecting the reflection color so turbidity it will affect the value of the dust in the air. So if we uh, increase the value up to let's say 10, we'll notice that the environment will get a little bit dustier and the shadows now is going to be much stronger and also the light is also less stronger. So if we are increasing it to 20, which is the its maximum value, we are now going to see the lights is completely gone on. So let's say if you have a dusty environment, set the value to 10. If you want a clear environment or a clear sky, set it to 2 or maybe 3. 
choose the value that is suitable with the result that you want. For now, I'm going just to set up two, three. Okay, so now ozone, ozone is controlled with the value of the blue light in the sun. The maximum value is one and it will contrast with the turbidity. So let's see here in the bright area, if we decrease the ozone to zero, we will get a warmer color. If we increase it to one, we will get a colder color. So for now, I'll just set it up to 0.5 and let's see the intensity multiplier. Intensity multiplier affects the sun lighting. So if we increase the multiplier to two, we will get double V-ray sunlight. If we decrease it to 0.5, we will get less light. Normally, I leave it to the default value, which is one. Now let's talk about the sun, the size multiplier. The size multiplier affecting the way that the shadow behaves. So let's say if we increase it, we will get a softer shadow. So let's notice here in this area, if we increase the size to five, we will get a softer shadow. In contrast, if we decrease the size multiplier, let's say to 0.2, we'll get a very strong shadows. So let's see here the shadow of the tree. It's very clear, but in the same time, it's not very re realistic. So let's set up the value to two and we will get this nice smooth shadows, which is more realistic. So set up the value as you want and it's different from scene to scene and and from environment to environment. Okay, now let's see the filter color. The filter color affect the, let's say, color of the sun. So if you want something, uh, a warmer color, just select like an orange color like that, then let's say hit OK. And now we are getting like sunset sun. And you can change the color mode from here. The default color mode is filter. You can change it to direct or override. And usually we use it as filter, so leave it there. The shadow subdivs control the quality of the shadows. So if you increase the value, let's say to 16, you will get much smoother and high quality shadows. If you leave it at the default value, which is three, you will get a little bit noisy shadows. So I'll put it on eight. Finally, we have the sky model. So we have some of the presets. So the default one is basic. Let's change it to overcast and see our test under. IPR, so we'll get a different effect. If you want a clear sky, we will get this. And as you can see, it affect on the color of the sun. So change it as you like. For me, I'm going to leave it on the clear sun or the clear sky. And that's it for the V-Ray Sun settings. Now let's see our test render. So let's stop the IPR render and let's hit render. Okay, so that's the final result of our test render. And this is the result that we have got from using V-Ray Sun. And normally I use this method to set up my lighting, uh, which is testing the lighting with the override material. And after that, apply all the materials. And maybe in the end, I will adjust uh, the lighting a little bit. But for now, this is the method. Of course, we didn't finish yet. We have to add the HDRI lighting and link the V-Ray Sun with the HDRI. But this is a topic for another video. For now, that's it for this video. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming video. And of course, like this video and share it with the others. This is very helpful for the YouTube algorithm. That's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye.